Let's look at Black Fencer Swords. Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator. So this is somewhat overdue and it is going to be a light touch, fairly quick review. Um, but really just to look at briefly the Black Fencer range of nylon swords. Now first of all, what are nylon swords? I realise not everybody watching my channel does HEMA or necessarily knows very much about HEMA. Um, essentially there are maybe three types of weapons that are commonly used in HEMA. There are steel weapons which are for the most part um, blunt flexible versions of their real counterparts uh, which require the most level of protective equipment. Then there are um, what are essentially bokkens, so wooden wasters, uh, which are not used very much anymore, but were used very extensively, probably the most widespread HEMA weapon for the first kind of 10 years of, of HEMA, maybe a bit less than that, um, of which Purple Heart Armoury are the most reputable um, company making them and making fantastic products. They also make other things as well, so go and have a look at the Purple Heart Armoury website. Um, and also great, um, great people, great to uh, deal with and really nice. Um, but there are also companies making nylon, which to all, all intents and purposes, to a typical person like you or me, is kind of like plastic, uh, plastic swords. Uh, so they're essentially like real weight, real size toy swords. Um, now, one of the disadvantages of plastic swords is they look like plastic swords. But assuming you don't care about that, which I don't, frankly, um, they are very much not LARP weapons and they are very much not something that you can uh, allow your children to whack each other with because they will break each other's arms with them. They are the same weight and uh, balance as the real things, more or less. Now in um, Scholar Gladiatoria for many many years and in fact at fight camp uh, in the nylon tournaments we um, advocate the use of the Knight's Shop, um, the Knight's Shop Red Dragon um, range of uh, David Rawlings designed, um, or we also had input into it and Nick from AHF also had input actually, into the uh, nylon weapons, the Rawlings range of nylon weapons available through the HEMA shop which is the same as the Knight's Shop and their brand is called Red Dragon. <laughs> so three names to remember that. Um, and um, we use those, we've used those for years and for our purposes, they're great. The reason being that they're a very um, safe, relatively safe beginner weapon to get people in class, to get 20, 30 people in a class training and doing techniques with. I can't um, physically carry that number of steel weapons to run a class. Um, so there's all sorts of advantages to the plastic weapons. Not only are they safer, they're a bit lighter, which for beginners is no bad thing, I think. Um, they're, um, they've got obviously they're plastic so they've got smooth rounded edges and they're flexible in the, in the point. You're less likely to poke someone's eye out or break a teeth with one, or tooth with one. But you must remember they are still solid lumps of nylon or plastic. They, they're still, if you're sparring with them you need to wear appropriate kit. You need to wear fencing masks and hand protection and everything else. I probably know of more broken fingers or at least equal number of broken fingers from um, plastic weapons with inappropriate gloves as I do from steel weapons. Um, so you know the plastic weapons can hit hard and we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. Now in terms of the uh, the Red Dragon range or Rawlings range from the HEMA shop or Night shop, <laughs> so many names, um, uh, compared to black fencer weapons, without a shadow of a doubt the black fencer weapons are more historically accurate. Um, they are similar to, basically the same as real weight, the same balance, um, and the hilts are more formed like a real sword. So you'll see that they've got, um, in this case, this is a side sword, a developed steel hilt with a steel pommel. Um, and yes, absolutely, in moving it around, if you close your eyes, yeah, this absolutely could be a real steel side sword. And as well as their standard ranges, I think they'll make anything custom. They do everything from montantes to daggers uh, and, and dusaks and side swords and I think even rapiers um, and obviously long swords, arming swords, sabres. Um, their, their curved sabres are quite popular incidentally for people who are doing earlier period like G Georgian, so we're looking at Roworth and um, Angelo period, Napoleonic period um, sabre, or indeed Polish sabre as well. So people doing Polish sabre or earlier sabre tend to 
quite often use those for beginners. Um, and um, they are really good. They are flexible. Um, they are less flexible than the um, Rawlings range, than the, the Night Shop's swords. Um, and, but they are bigger blades, um, so it would be hard, difficult to make them as flexible as a, as a rolling sword because these are beefier, and being beefier they're more like the weight of the real weapon. The advantage of being broader, um, obviously the disadvantage is they're stiffer, um, the advantage is you've got a broader edge. So in theory, although you're hitting someone with a heavier object, it's spread over a larger area. What I would say though is that the distal taper, um, certainly on this sword and on the long sword I've got as well, I personally think they could have and should have more distal taper than they do. So these swords I believe were originally inspired by the so-called Penti swords, Penti being a Swedish maker of um, nylon swords back in the early 2000s I think. I think I remember seeing them at Swordfish back in... 2000, 2000 and something. Um, I'm so old, I can't remember that far back. Um, but the Penti swords were fantastic. Now what the Penti swords did is they had a distal taper pretty much like a real sword, obviously thicker because it's plastic rather than steel, um, but a similar degree of distal taper to a real sword. And they got thinner and thinner and then they had a bulbous knob on the end, so to speak. Um, and that made them safe for thrusting. The disadvantage is when you make something get thinner and thinner and thinner and then slightly bulbous at the end, is they can be a bit floppy at the end. And no one likes a floppy weapon, do you? If you want to get good penetration, you need a stiff weapon. Now, um, where these are different is that these have a lesser degree of distal taper, but still remain quite thick at the end. I understand that that's probably made that way for cost reasons. I'm sure that they could make one like the Penti sword, if you asked them, but it's probably quite a labour intensive way of making a blade and also presumably a material is quite wasteful because you're removing a lot of material but you have to start with a thick um, blade to start with. Um, whereas this doesn't vary so much in thickness. It does distally taper but not so much. Now, in terms of the hilts, I'll come back to the blades in a minute and what I think is a slight negative to them, but uh, the hilts are great, okay? One of the features, again, I believe it's taken from the Penti swords. You'll see that they go through here. Um, and what that achieves, the reason they go through the blade is the blade's thick enough to be able to do that. Obviously, you couldn't do that with a steel sword. Um, but it means that you keep it nice and thin. And with a side sword in particular, where you're gonna put your finger over the guard, that's super important because you, you need to have that smallness, that thinness, um, in order to get the feeling of what an actual steel hilt would be like. And indeed, um, it does feel exactly like uh, a rapier or a side sword hilt. It's, um, it's great and really well made. The welding is pretty good, it, not the most beautiful shape. Personally, if I was making these, I would hope to make them a little bit more elegant. They look a little bit industrial to me. Um, but having said that, so, so one of the main reasons they look like that to me is everything's a bit too big, like the finger rings are a bit big and a bit bulbous and a bit square. But in their defense, I would say that if you're wearing a big padded glove like a Red Dragon glove or um, maybe even the um, St. Mark Koenig's glove or something like this, you need to have a big hole to get your finger through, so to speak. Um, because you've got a big padded finger. So if you've got a big padded finger, you need a finger ring that's bigger than a normal, you know, than an actual historical finger ring. But by and large, oh, and I really like the detail, obviously, I think this was a necessity. They've put almost what are like archery blunts, so uh, hard rubber. I was gonna say rubber, but that might give you the impression they're sort of soft and squishy. They come off a nice sounder. Um, that just push onto the end of these bars, and obviously those bars would be dangerous if you didn't have something on the end. So great, good stuff. Um, the hilts, fantastic. The grip is cord. It's not that nice in a bare hand, but you're never really gonna be wearing a bare hand. Well, you might be if you're drilling, but most of the time you'll have leather gloves on or padded gloves. So uh, you need something with a good amount of friction um, and those uh, that cord wrap grip, perfectly good, perfectly fine. So the hilt's fantastic. Now, the downside. What I personally don't like about the Black Fence Swords and why we don't use them in Scholar Gladiatoria. Um, or at least we don't use them very much, we do have some of them in that. Um, but we mostly use the Rawlings range from the night shop. And the reason is, what is the purpose of a plastic sword? Well, a plastic sword, um, for us, is a beginner weapon. 
Uh, it's something that's safer, so we don't have to wear so much protective equipment with it. Um, and uh, it's a bit lighter, um, which means that for transportation, to and from class as a teacher when you've got to carry lots of weapons or just from the fact that beginners aren't very strong yet and they're still kind of getting used to handling a sword it's beneficial. So, um, so safer, uh, safer for beginners and a little bit lighter uh, are beneficial and um, in terms of the safer, not safer just because it's plastic but safer because they hit less hard because they're lighter. So they're connected points. Now my issue with the black fencer weapons is yes they are absolutely unquestionably more like real swords than the night shop swords are. But that's kind of not what we, and I realise other groups are different, but in Scholar Gladiatoria that's kind of not what we want from a plastic sword. What we want from a plastic sword is something that is really as safe as it can be without going full up. Um, so, so something as safe as it can be which is still quite sword-like and that we can wear the minimal amount of gear to fight in and um, so therefore you know because it's safer um, and it's also nice sometimes if it's hot weather or if you're doing melee games or whatever to be able to wear less gear we have to wear so much gear to spar in steel if we find ourselves putting on the same amount of gear to fight with nylon then what's the point of fighting the nylon? We may as well fight with steel. And so that's my issue with the black fencer weapons, is that I find that they hit hard enough, they don't hit as hard as steel, because they have got the broader edge, but they hit hard enough, and they need thrust hard enough, dumb. They hit with a thrust. Really, I know you can't see the floor here, but they do not bend, okay? Yes, if you push slowly on them, they bend, but if you hit someone with the blade in a straight line, they ju it's just like hitting them with a piece of wood um, and they just they hit really hard um, so by and large the protective equipment we find the protective equipment you need to wear to spar with these is the same as for steel and because a lot of us spar with steel we just spar with steel so what's the point of this so that's that's my summation really is that um, I think they are fantastic they're brilliant for drilling no question but for sparring you kind of need to wear almost as much, maybe not quite as much, but almost as much as you do for steel sparring. So what, what are they filling? What gap are they filling? Whereas for us, the Night Shop or Hema Shop, Rawlings Range, Red Dragon, um, Nylon Swords are light enough and hit with little enough force, even the Long Swords, that we can really ramp down what we have to wear and they are that much safer for beginners as far as our experience tells. Um, but I do understand other groups, different experiences, and these are hugely popular and they're very well made and if you want something really great for drilling in a class and a re realistic weapon that, but you can't afford to buy lots of steel weapons, this is probably your go-to thing for it. So there we go. I hope that's a balanced and fair um, assessment of Black Fencer Nylon Swords. Cheers folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook, you can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.